I have an idea. Let's all go in and have a few here. No, not tonight. I'm too tired. Oh, come on, Mary. Be a good guy. No, I've had enough, Dave. Good night, Jimmy. Don't drive too fast. Don't worry, Mary. Sorry you won't come along. Good night. Good night. Good night. Is there anything else to it? No, that's all, Faith. Thank you. Faith. Yes, miss? Is my grandfather in there? Yes. Uh, may I take your coat? Thank you. Hello, Grant. Well, huh. 10 o'clock. You're home early. You're not ill, are you? No, just bored. Oh, <laughs> the party was a flop, eh? Just like all the rest of them. What's the matter, honey? Oh, nothing, really. But, Gramp, how would you like to be on my merry-go-round? Dancing at the club, dancing at Mrs. Peabody's charity affair, dropping in at the Clayton's for cocktails, tennis at the Markham's and polo at the club. And the first of the year comes around and we start in all over again. Oh, it's all so stupid. Well, what do you want to do? Find myself, lose myself, who knows? What are you talking about? Grant, do you know how old I am? Yes. <laughs> You're nothing but a baby. To you, maybe. But it's time I married and settled down. Great! I'm all for it. Who's the lucky man? No one, yet. What? After all the proposals you've had? Well, I don't believe they want me. <laughs> now I know you're sick. Did it ever occur to you that they might be in love with the money that you're making in the mattress business? Oh, that's absolute nonsense. No, it isn't. I want to be sure that the man I marry loves me. Granted. But how are you going to prove that? Well, I don't know exactly. But I want to go away. New York, Chicago, Pittsburgh, where I can be just Mary Dakin. Mm-hmm. And then what? Maybe I'll find that man. A man like you must have been, Grant. I don't care whether he's a millionaire or a shoe clerk. Whether we live in a house like this or in one room over a garage. <laughs> Sounds a bit fantastic. Try to see it my way, won't you, Grant? Oh, all right. But how much is it going to cost me? Well, nothing now. But when I find him, it's liable to cost you plenty. You're not employed, Miss Bacon? No, but I hope to be soon. I hope so, too. I'm sorry, I have no single room. But I'm going to put you in with a very lovely young lady. Come this way, please, Mr. Porter, bring the bags. Come in. I've brought you a roommate. Miss Bacon? Miss Clark. How do you do, Miss Clark? Happy to meet you, Miss Aiken. I'm sure you two girls are going to get on beautifully together. Well, all we can do is try. I'm sure you will. But which one is my bed? Uh, that's all yours, Miss Aiken. We share the wash basin and the clothes closet. Well, that's nice. It's a cozy place we have here. It's all right. Mm -hmm. You'll like it. By the way, the name is Mary. Okay. Mine's Lil. Well, I'd better get started if I'm going to keep my date. Oh, I'm sorry I made it now. It's not very nice leaving you alone the first night. Oh, don't you worry about me. I have a lot of unpacking to do, and I have a very good book. I'll make myself comfortable and read. Telephone. That's mine. One buzz for me and two for you. Hello? Tell them I'll be right down. Got to get started. Charlie's fit to be tied when I keep him waiting down there. In the lobby? Yeah. But it's good to keep him sitting a while. Gets a lot of ideas out of their head, if you know what I mean. Say, where do you work? Oh, I guess it is a little elaborate, but... <laughs> Listen, girl, you needn't explain to me. And $35 an ounce. You know perfume, don't you? Well, I ought to. I sell it all day at Shields. Hey, maybe you could get me a job there. What can you do? Well, I've never worked. Well, 
Isn't there something you know something about? Mattresses. Huh? I do, really. Then maybe you can tell me what's wrong with this hay bag. I've been breaking my back on it for two years. Well, no springs. That's what's the matter with it. Yeah, but springs are under the mattress. But modern mattresses have springs in them. As many as 875 in the good ones. Individually pocketed in burlap. Well, don't stop, kid. All right. The secret of sound, refreshing sleep lies beneath the surface of your mattress. The coils, the pre-built border, and felted cotton on both sides are all necessary so that it keeps its resiliency, it doesn't pack down or break through, which, of course, is vital in preserving its original comfort throughout years of service. Just a minute, young lady. You'll be selling me one next. I'm sure you'll do. Come along, I'll put you to work. Wheeler. Yes, sir. Tell Spencer I want him. Yes, sir. Second race. Blue boy. Five bucks on the nose. Okay. Right. If that horse comes in, baby, you and I are going to paint the town tomorrow night. Yeah, if he comes in. Don't worry. I can pick him. The boys want to see him. And I'm sure you'll get on to our methods quickly, Mistaken. I'll do my best. Mistaken, this is Mr. Spencer. How do you do? How do you do? Mistaken is going to be with us. I want you to show her the stop. Oh, with pleasure. Thank you. No. Uh, this way. Now, uh, this is one of our cheaper grades. It retails for thirty-seven fifty. Uh, where do you live? Why do you want to know? Oh, I don't know. I, I just asked. Do you mind? With a girlfriend of mine. Oh, with a girlfriend. Uh, now that mattress, that sells for uh, forty-five dollars. Oh, I see. Forty. Uh, uh, is this your hometown? No. No. Uh, now over here, uh, this is one of our best sellers. Tell me, uh, wh where do you come from? Rosedale. Rosedale? <laughs> now, how could a girl as gorgeous as you come from a place like Rosedale? You were going to show me the stock. Oh, the stock, of course not. Now, over here, uh, this is the rest well, our own mate. Now, this mattress retails for $47.50. Yeah, and how about having dinner with me tonight? Are you in the habit of asking people to have dinner with you at their first meeting? Sure, if I like them. And do they always accept? Uh-huh. Uh, why not? I think we'd better get on with the stock. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> Business first. Pleasure later. I'll walk along home with you. That's out. We're going window shopping. What a nerve for the fellow. He's yeah. fresh, all right, but he's okay. Good-hearted and all that. The first to dig in his pocket when somebody's in a jam. Excuse me, just a minute. You forgot to say good morning to me. Good morning. Oh, don't be like that. How about giving a fellow a break? Oh, please, I'm busy now. That'll be 52.75 in that covering, then. Thank you. I'll have your change in a minute. Look, uh, I could show you a swell time. Could you? Certainly. We'll take the Saturday night boat to Mackinac Island. I don't like boats. Be off that mattress. Oh, yes, sir. If you're not too busy with your homework, I'd like a little service. Oh, <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, what can I do for you, sir? Oh, something in a medium price mattress? Uh, oh, <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, right over this way, sir. Here you are, sir. Here's one of our better mattresses. Just feel how soft that is. You hold her expertly. Oh, <laughs> it's a knack that I have it with. What's that? Uh, as I was saying, sir. It's the custom workmanship that distinguishes this from ordinary mattresses. Uh, now, um, just test those springs. What's the price of this one? Forty-nine fifty. Bye. Oh, it's good. <laughs> that isn't so bad when you consider the quality of the construction. Oh, oh excuse me, just a minute, sir. Pardon me. Uh, is this yours, madam? Oh yes, I was just looking for. Thanks so much. <laughs> it's quite all right. So you think I'm okay, huh? I didn't say that. Look, uh, forget what I said about that boat trip and have dinner with me tonight, will you? I'll think it over.
I began to think you were never coming. Coming for what? Well, you said you'd have dinner with me. Oh, you're mistaken. I'm tired and I'm going home. Oh, now, wait a minute. Don't be like that. Good night, Mr. Spencer. Hey, wait a minute. Can't I come up? I'm afraid not. Gentlemen aren't allowed above the first floor. Oh, he is. Well, tell him I don't want to be annoyed. I told him that. But he said he won't go until you come down. All right. Tell him I'll be down in a minute. Say, listen. Let's uh, wait till we get outside. Do you really want to have dinner with me? Yeah, I know just the place. Oh, no. I know just the place. Ah, this will do. I don't get it. You wanted to have dinner with me, didn't you? Yeah, but... Uh... Sit down. This is a nice, cozy little place you picked out. Well, this was your idea, not mine. Well, start taking some of the things out. Well, crackers, bread, celery. Well, you thought of everything, didn't you? Everything but this. Have a sandwich? Thanks. You know, this wasn't my idea at all. Pickle? Yeah. You know, that horse I'd bet on had come in. I'd have taken you out tomorrow night for a big evening. Yes. I'd have taken you to Paris. Swellest spot in this town. But he didn't come in. So you were broke until Saturday. How do you know? Oh, never mind. None of my business what you do. All right. Tell me off. I can take it from you. Don't you ever think about the future? Huh. The present's what counts. That and have myself a swell time. Aren't you having a good time now? Sure I am. And it didn't cost you a thing, did it? Except for the food. No. I can think of a lot of ways to have fun without spending money. Baby, you name them. All right. I'll do just that. Will you keep a date with me next Sunday? Hey, gee. This is great. Now I got you asking me. Certainly I will.
Well, how did you like it? Oh, boy. <laughs> that got me. What's the setup for next Sunday? Oh, no, I, I know. It'll be a picnic in the country. A million miles from a streetcar or water. I'll lug the lunch. You'll spread it on the ground. The sandwiches will be covered with flies. The cake with ants. Oh, yes, chickens, cows, all that sort of thing. And then to top it off, it'll rain. Oh, not hard. Just a pleasant little drizzle. Oh, boy. I can't wait for next Sunday. <laughs> well, this isn't so bad, is it? No, but I ate too much. Well, there were no flies in the sandwiches and no ants in the cake. <laughs> <laughs> Those chickens sound just like the band concert. <laughs> well, you wish this rain on it. Sure I did. I like it. Ah, uh, gee. This is great. I think I'll buy a farm. Would you like to live on a farm, Mary? Now, if that's a proposal, it's the least romantic one I've ever heard. <laughs> You've heard a lot of them about that. Promise me one thing, Mary. If you won't listen to another, why, Bob, you amaze me. Well, I amaze myself. But if marriage is inevitable, why waste time? Is it inevitable? I'm beginning to think so. How about you? As I said before, if that's proposal, you'll have to do better. All right. Fair lady, I ask your hand. Will you marry me? Oh, Bob, be serious. Very well. I will. I love you, sweetheart. Honestly, I do. But, Bob, you don't know anything about me. Oh, that doesn't make any difference. I just know that I want you. Would you say that again? Say what? That you just want me? That's it, sweetheart. One week from today, you'll be Mrs. Robert Spencer. Oh, Bob, I love you. And no more work. You're quitting that job. You'll have your hands full just taking care of me. You want me to quit? Listen, sweetheart. There are two types of men that I have no use for. The fellow who lets his wife support him, and the one that marries an heiress, and marks time until she inherits. Oh. Well, what's the matter, dear? Oh, nothing. Did I say anything wrong? No. Well, what are you thinking about? Oh, just you, darling. Your license check's all right. $125, all it's worth. It's an early 33. They told me it was a late 33. And look at all the accessories. Radio, Oh, that time. don't mean a thing. All modern cars come equipped like that. Wait a minute, I'll show you the book. $125, all I can give you for it. All right, I'll take it. Come on in the office, they'll make you out a check. How do you do? You interested in this little job? Yeah. I have a cigarette. Thanks. Match? Nice. Nice little job. Clean as a whistle. How much is it? Uh, $250. What year is it? Uh, it's a late 33. A lot of dough for a 33, isn't it? Oh, no, my friend. Wait a minute. I'll show you the listing in the red book. See? Besides, look at all the extra equipment. Radio, side mounts. That's the best buy on the lot. And 18 wants to pay. What's the least amount you'll take down? Uh, what can you afford? $25? Come on inside, my friend. I think we can make a deal. Sorry, I kept you waiting, Bob. Oh, think nothing of it, sweetheart. I've got a great surprise for you. Come on. Did you 
yours? It's ours. How much? $250. $25 down and very easy payments. It's extravagant. Oh, it's a steal. Good rubber, good paint. The upholstery's pretty good. Take a look. Yes, it's nice in spots. We've got a lot of territory to cover this, Cynthia. Come on, get in. No, you slide in first. All right. I've checked the possibilities here. You figure out which one you'd like to see first. Don't you think we ought to get married before we start looking at apartments? Oh, this way it's a lark. But marriage isn't going to be a lark, is it, Bob? Well, with me it is. Come on, let's get started. A couple of larks in search of a nest. Wee, oui, that was terrific. They must have thought we wanted to buy those places. Yes, and I can't see that the furniture was so wonderful in any of them. Bob, if you'd only let me keep my job, we could manage this. Not on your life. Oh, well, that's silly. Listen, sweetheart. No wife of mine is going to work, and that's that. Well, I don't see what we're going to do. Well, you leave it to me. I'll take care of everything. I've got a great idea. Well, what is it? Now, tomorrow during our lunch hour, we'll go to a furniture store that I know where we can get some swell stuff for practically nothing down, and the payments are a cinch. I wouldn't advise it, sir. Well, what's the matter with it? Well, uh, perhaps it's all right, but uh, don't go overboard. Well, uh, after all, I'm no fool. Uh, neither am I, but do you take when the wife and me started out, well, sir. At the moment, uh, we're a little too hungry to start out with you and your wife. The veal is magnificent, sir. Spencer? This, Mrs. Spencer, is where we live. Well, what do you think of it? Oh, it? Wait, you haven't seen anything yet. Oh, Bob, it's sweet. How did you ever find it? It's all brand new. I, I didn't find it. I, I bought it. This is all ours. You bought it? Every stick of it. And I flatter myself that my taste isn't so bad. Bob, how did you do this? Why, it's a cinch. Practically nothing down, and very easy payments. Oh, why did you do that? That's awful. Oh, what's awful about it? Well, you'll never be able to keep up the payments. You just can't do it. Now, let me worry about that, will you? Oh, Bob, we start in debt, we'll never get out of debt. The car Now, listen, Mary. Are we going to start off our married life with a fuss? I thought you'd be tickled to death. Oh, come on, honey. Smile for me. Well, we're in it now. We might as well see it through. But Bob Spencer, let me tell you something. We'll have to go on a strict budget to do it. Okay, sweets. Whatever you say. Oh, uh, you haven't seen the kitchen yet. It's a honey. Think you'd whip me up some coffee in this little galley? I can try. Here, let me. That's my girl. You go in the other room. You make me nervous. Oh, and take my coat. And hat. Well, this is the stuffiest place I've ever seen. Oh, it's quite nice inside, Graham. Yeah. Make yourself at home, Graham. Be with you in a minute.
Don't you like it? Come on, I'll show you the kitchen. And believe it or not, I can cook. Now, wait a minute. This may be your idea of it. But it certainly isn't any place for you to be living. Well, it suits me. And besides, the furniture is ours. We're paying for it by the month. Oh, that's utter nonsense. Who does this fellow think you are? That's just it, Grant. He doesn't know who I am. And I don't dare tell him now. Well, I'll tell him. This is no wait, place Grant. to... You forget one thing. I love him. And he loves me. What's the matter? I thought I told you that I wanted you to look like a modest little man from a small town. Well, don't I? Well, no. With all of that white business in there, you look like a stuffy old bank president. Well, what are we going to do? Well, huh? we're going to take it off right now. Now, wait a minute. Now, wait. Now, go easy. Oh. Hey, look. What are you going to do with me? Well, now, just wait a minute. Help me a little bit, will you? Well, I help oh, all I can. Thanks. Oh, I wonder who that is. Here, put this in your pocket. All right, then. Your name's Spencer? Yes. Okay, Bill, bring it in. But that can't be for me. Sure it is, lady. Well, what do you want it? Well, I, I don't know. Grant, what do you think? Why, I'd put it over... How about over there? It'll show when the door's open. Well, wait a minute, and I'll move the chair. Wait till I get this out of your way. All right, boy. Are you sure this is for me? Lady, it's got to be. I wouldn't take this piano downstairs again for anybody. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Thanks, mister. All right. so sweet and he's trying so hard to give me everything but the boy is practically licked before he begins well remember your own youth grin and the kick you got out of making efforts yeah well that was different well so is this and i'm going to make every possible effort to help bob just as grand helped you see darling oh there's bob now hello dear hello sweet thank you bob this is my grandfather well, you didn't tell me you had a grandfather. I wanted to surprise you. How are you, Bob? Well, how do you do, Grant? This is great. Welcome to the house of Spencer. Thank you. Oh, so it got here, eh? I told them if they couldn't deliver today, I wouldn't buy the darn thing. Well, Bob, it's wonderful. I'll bet this little girl has wanted a piano all her life, eh, Grant? And any wife of mine has got to learn to play the piano. Oh, but she... I'll try awfully hard, Bob. You get ten free lessons. And if you haven't learned by that time, we'll manage some more. Well, I'd better put these flowers in water. Oh, by the way, did you bring the meat? Oh, yes. <laughs> now I know why you wanted that extra chop. One extra chop? Gee, I could eat a dozen. Now, Grant. <laughs> I started everything before I went to meet Grant, so it won't be long. Ah, got of potatoes. Beans. What's for dessert? Poor man's pudding. I was afraid of that. What's the idea, Grant? This is what you have to do, young fellow, if you want to get ahead. Save everything, even string. <laughs> now I know where Mary gets her budget ideas. There, Grant. Right. Saving string and buying pianos. Doesn't make sense. <laughs> Don't you worry about that piano. I'll tell you about that later. Tell me now. Oh, no. Not till after dinner, when we're all comfortable and I can have your undivided attention. Oh, Bob, please. Oh, leave the boy alone. He knows what he wants to do. Well, okay, but both of you get out of here now. There's scarcely room enough for one. All right. Time. Come on, Grant. We'll give the piano a workout. Ah, ah, yes. <laughs> and so I met Babcock one day at lunch. Right after we'd come back from our honeymoon, dear, he made me the proposition again to go in with him. I told him that I was going to ask for a raise, and if I didn't get it, I'd accept his offer. And did you ask for the raise? Yes. That's why I'm accepting his offer. What do you think of it, Grant? Well, the automobile accessory setup is good business, providing this fellow... Uh, uh, Babcock. Babcock has enough money to tide you over till you get started. 
He's solid enough. Besides, I got a $50 a week drawing account. Hence the piano. Ah, it's a cinch. Practically nothing down and very easy payments. Well, uh, Bob, I do think it's extravagant. Don't you worry about that. I'll take care of everything. Am I right? Now, don't you drag me into your arguments, young fella. <laughs> That's right, Grant. You wouldn't know how we do business in the big city. Where's Grant going to sleep? Right here on the divan. Oh, no, no. I think I'd better go to a hotel. Oh, not on your life. You're going to stay here with us. Well, I've slept on worse beds than this many times. I'll get the bedding. I hope you can arrange to spend some time with us, Grant. Well, thanks, Bob, but I've got to get back to my... I mean, I've, I've got to get back and water my flowers. Ah, oh, forget it. It isn't very often that you get to see the city. Oh, may I help? Think you can? Can't Grant. I do something? Yes, Grant. You can take your chair and sit right down over there. All right. How about it, Mary? All right, here we go. We don't have visitors very often, Grant. Oh, my. <sighs> Well, that's fine. That's oh, fine. Oh, yes. You're a great help. Well, who washed all those dishes yesterday? All what right. I mean. <laughs> there you are, Grant. I think that'll be soft enough for you. That's fine. Good night, Grant. Good night, honey. Coming, Bob? Uh, in a minute. I just want to tuck Grant in. Boy, that's a deal. see the town on. Oh, now, wait a minute. I couldn't take this, my boy. Sure you can. And if you need anything at any time, just let me know. I can always manage. But don't tell Mary. She's a terrible little tightwad. Well, good night, Grap. See you in the morning. There you are. Thanks. Okay. Drop in again. We're doing all right. That's the fourth headlight bulb I've sold today. Well, that beats yesterday's record anyhow. Things are bound to be slow once in a while. If things were half as good as they were when we started, I wouldn't worry. Oh, it is bad, I know. It's worse than that, Bob. Sherman Brothers is a tough firm to butt. They're well established and they've got plenty of capital to boot. Look, fella, you want to let me out. Okay, just say the word. I can't even do that. I couldn't give you a check, Bob. If you can see your way clear to ride along with me for another week or so, see how things break, it's the best I can offer. All right. I'll manage somehow. Thanks, Bob. You go on home. I'll close up. All right, thanks. Cheer up. I've seen things stay bad for six months and then get worse. Go on, scram, you big ape. Hi, Toots. Hi, Bobby. How's everything? Everything's swell now. Come with me. I have a surprise for you. Look at this. Oh, what? I mean, did... Did you buy all those things for me? Of course, silly. I went to a wonderful sale. Well, what's the matter? Aren't you pleased? Pleased? Oh, why, well, I'm tickled pink. Great stuff. Yes, sir, great stuff. I'm pretty smart. I'll say you're smart. What have you got there? Oh, this? Oh. Just some shoe polish and a brush that I picked up. I figured that for the price of a shiner to stand, I could give myself a dozen at home. Now you're smart. Oh, yes, indeedy. Well, you look at your new things, and I'll go put dinner on the table. Any desk drawer, darling? Thanks. There are some bills on the desk, dear. Oh, yeah. Sure looks good to me, baby. Did you 
Did you have time to make out all those checks? Yeah. All but the one for the last car payment. I'll attend to that later. Here you are, dear. Thank you. You know, hon, now that I've got all those new shirts, I was thinking, uh, maybe you won't have to send out the laundry for a couple of weeks. Well, Bob, whatever gave you that idea? Oh, nothing, but... Well, when you're starting a new business venture, it might be advisable to keep as much cash on hand as possible. You know, Bob, I'm sure I could wash out some of those things. Listen, sweetheart. If you try anything like that, we're going to have our first battle. Now, you go ahead and eat your dinner like a good girl and stop being silly. Stolen. I left it outside the grocery store on Park Street. Uh, I'll telephone the police right away. Yes? Well, I'm sorry that it upset you so. Yes, dear. Right. Goodbye. Well, my car has been repossessed. Oh, gee, Bob, that's tough. I'm sorry to do something about that. That car, do you mind if I leave early? I want to go by the title insurance building. There's a fellow down there I know, and well, he might offer me a job. Well, go on, get going. Thanks. And all along. What's wrong? Why, why, nothing, dear. You're not worried about that old car, are you? Oh, don't be silly, darling. We didn't need it anyway. But I have a feeling that something's going to happen. Oh, now, now, dear. Nothing's going to happen. I can manage everything. Just leave it all to me. Sorry, we engaged the salesman this morning. Sorry, Mr. Warrington has taken out all the men he needs. It takes a lot of clothespins, doesn't it? Gee, honey, I guess you haven't done much of this. Let me show you how. <laughs> of course, how stupid of me. Thank you. That's all right. You know, there are lots of tricks to all trades. Well, I'll learn, I guess. Bye. Bye, honey.
Hi, Mrs. Spencer. Where's my wife? She's right in there. Tell me what happened. She had a fall. Is she badly hurt? Go back to Mr. Spencer. Oh. Nothing to be alarmed about. You may go in, but I wouldn't stay too long. Thank you. Hi, Toots. Hi, Bobby. Gee, baby. You had me scared. Well, I'm all right now. What were you doing anyway? I was trying to do some of that laundry. After all I said about that. You're not going to scold me, are you, Bobby? Of course not, sweet. I was bringing the clothes down from the roof. And I fell down the stairs. Where you fellas be? Oh, about uh, ten minutes will do it. Well, I think I'll go. Oh, uh, Mrs. Hawks, uh, about that check that I gave you a week ago for the rent. Well, uh, I'm obliged to give up the apartment, and, well, I thought perhaps that I might get a refund. I'm sorry, Mr. Spencer, but the owners don't permit refunds. But the apartment is yours for the rest of the month. Well. Something I'm okay. Thanks. They're nice, aren't they? Oh, they're lovely. Take them out and put them in water, will you, please? Mary, uh, I didn't want to mention this before. I hated to trouble you, but... But the hospital bill is going to be hard to meet, is that it? Well, forget it. Grant sent the money. Grant? Yes, he did. But, Mary... And you're not to argue about it. But, darling, he can't afford it. And it'll be such a long time before I can pay him back. Well, let's not worry about that now. Bob, I have good news for you. Great. What is it? I can go home tomorrow. Oh. Oh, no, dear. You you mustn't think of it, really. Well, think how much it'll save. Oh, I know, Mary, but I'll feel so much better if you'll stay here until you're entirely well. Oh, I want to go home. I want my own bed and my own things around me. I'm terribly homesick, Bob. That's the sweetest thing you've ever said to me, Mary. Tell me. Well, Mary, I... I couldn't make those last two payments, and, uh... Well, they've taken away our things. Oh, I see. There just isn't any home to go to. That's about it. Oh, but I'll get them back again, Mary. More and better. I know you will, dear. I'll tell you what we'll do. Let's go to Gramps. Oh, no, darling. Why, he's done enough for us already. Bob, listen. I've tried your way. Now, why don't you try mine? You mean go to Rosedale? Yes. <laughs> Not on your life. But you could get a job there. I'm sure you could. Imagine me in Rosedale. I, I mean, just picture it. I'd get a job as a grocery clerk, or I could water Grant's lawn, or mow it. Oh, well, it won't be that bad. I wouldn't fit in a hick town like that, dear. Well... Grant would be awfully happy to have us. I don't see what we're going to do. You're right about that. I hadn't figured how tough this is going to be on you. Wait a minute. You could go. Oh, I couldn't, Bob. Not without you. All right, Mary. 
We'll go to Rosedale. Is this the city park and museum? Don't ask so many questions. Come on. Uh, bring the bags, driver. Oh, it's good to see you, Hilda. Oh, Miss Mary. Now, your room, Miss Mary? Yes, they. Bob, this is Hilda. Oh, uh, how do you do, Hilda? Oh, Mr. Spencer, uh, Mr. Cannon expected to meet you, Miss Mary, but something detained him at the factory. Oh, that's all right. He'll probably be here shortly. Shall we go upstairs, Bob? This is our room, Bob. Yeah. Bob, you might as well know it now. The Cannon Mattress Factory belongs to Grant. That's fine. You've been having a lot of fun, haven't you? Oh, Bob, I wanted to tell you that day you asked me to marry you. And then you told me what you thought about heiresses, and you had me scared. I loved you, Bob. I still feel the same way. Well, why are you like that? How would you like me to be? I suppose after all this, the stuff that I bought for you looked pretty bad. I thought it was swell. Well, Bob, that isn't fair. I loved it, and you know I did. And I'd go right back to it now if... If we had it. Oh, let's not argue. I didn't want to come here any more than you did. Mary. You're tired, Mary. Lie down and rest a little bit. You remember what the doctor said? There you are. I admit I'm happy about the way everything's turned out because I'm going to make you general manager of my factory. Thank you, Bob. The telephone, Miss Mary. Thank you, Bates. There you are, Bob. Well, how does my proposition sound? You mean the general managership? Right. Well, I'd hate to throw some fellow out of a job. You wouldn't, because <laughs> I've never had a general manager. Oh, I see. You're going to fix up a nice soft spot for Mary's husband. Now, it's always been a dream of mine to fix up a very nice soft spot for my Mary's husband. Doubly kind, I'm sure. That was Betty Peabody. She said that everybody in town is dying to get a look at my new husband. They're planning a party at the club for us. Fine. Uh, I'll wear my monkey suit. That'll be cute. And carry a little tin cup. A beggar's never without his little tin cup. So, Mary, why don't you play something for us? All right, Grant. Now, let me tell you something, young man. What you need is to begin taking orders, not giving them. Up to now, you've had everything your way. Now, you're going to have it my way. Now, let me tell you something, Grandpa. Just a minute, Grandpa. Operator, get me the Union Station. No, I don't know the number. Thank you. Hello. What time is the next train out of here for Chicago? Yes, tonight, please. Thank you. Bob? Upstairs. Did you talk over that factory job with him? Oh, I didn't get a chance. I've enjoyed my little visit with you, Gramp. 
Now I must be getting back to business. Well, what are you talking about, Bob? Where are you going? Back to town to get myself a job. But you've got a job here, Bob. You're going to be my general manager. Oh, thanks a lot, Cramp. But I'm afraid I'm not suited to it. Nonsense. Stop being ridiculous, Bob. It's exactly what I intend to do. Stop being ridiculous. I do think you should explain, Bob. After all, all right. I'll explain. It must have been very amusing for you two to sit back and look on while I tried to get together a home. Such as it was. Sweating myself like a beaver trying to keep it going. Lay awake nights, tormenting myself with thoughts of what might happen to you, Mary. Yes, and you too, Gramp, if I didn't make good. Not to mention how I felt when everything blew up. Oh, yes. It must have been very amusing. But naturally, I can't see the joke. Bob, you're not going to leave me, are you? No, Mary. Not in the sense that you mean. But I can't swallow a setup like this. What's the matter with it? Any man in his right mind would jump at it if you ask me. All I'm asking you for is for that ten bucks that I gave you. What ten? Oh, yes. Yeah. There. Remember, Mary, you're my wife. I'll be sending for you, and when I do, you're coming back. Understand? Bob! Let him go, Mary. Why, Grant? Because the boy's absolutely right. Oh, now I wouldn't cry. Why, you've married a real man. It'll take more than you and I to make a fool of him. But I belong with him, Grant. I'm his wife. I know. Now everything will be all right. Now don't cry, dear. Don't cry. to hear the difficult time you've been having, Spencer. I wish there was something I could offer you. It's all my own fault, I suppose. Oh, here's the young fellow who took your job. <laughs> Try and get it away from him. Try it. Hi, Bob. How are you, Wheeler? I'm on my way to Mark Bigelow's to sell him that bill of goods. Goodbye, Mrs. Steele. Goodbye, Spencer. Good luck. Drop in again. You bet I will. Thank you. Mind if I come along? I'd like to see how good you really are. Not at all. Maybe you'll learn something. Can't tell. Brandy, you're plugging me. Cannon. He's used them in all his other hotels. It ought to be easy. However, if you'd like to leave the sample, I'd be glad to think it over. How are you, Mr. Oh. Biglow? Uh, how are you, Spencer? Biglow? Oh, Mr. Crane, Mr. Spencer, and Mr. Wheeler. Happy to meet you. How do you Well, by the looks of that new hotel of yours, you must be about ready to talk business. It is a fine-looking building, isn't it? Ah, uh, it's tops. All you need now is a can of mattress on every bed to make it a success. Oh, uh, are you in the mattress business, Mr. Crane? Well, let's see what you've got here. Your own manufacturer? Mm-hmm. Oh, looks darn good. It is good. Feel this 100% prime middle and cotton. You might be selecting the cover, Mr. Biglow. What I like is the way those coils are assembled. Yeah, and don't overlook the grade of that filling material. Uh, Fellow, you've got something here. 200 twin size to a floor. And uh, at approximately one half the cost. That green damask is a good number. Don't you think so? Uh, wait a minute, Wheeler. No hair, huh? Well, hair packed solid and uncomfortable in the bat. Besides, it's expensive. And the way this mattress is built, entirely unnecessary. Oh, Crane, what is the best you can do on that number? Well, in large lots, I could let you have another 10% off less. Hmm. Oh, uh, pardon me, Wheeler. I think I'll pass up the cannon line this time. I think you're making a mistake, sir, and I hope you change your mind. Uh, come now, Crane. We ought to be able to get together on an additional five with the damask covering. Well, you were certainly a big help. I'm sorry, but... Raise your loyalty to a brand you've been selling for years. Look, Wheeler, he's got those cannon mattresses beat both ways from the middle. Uh, Mr. Spencer, just a moment. Well, so long, and thanks for the ride. Uh, Mr. Spencer, I've got it. I've got the order. Swell. Oh, but it was you who put it over. Uh, uh, could I, uh... I mean, uh, uh, maybe you wouldn't, but 
The truth is, uh, I need help. Uh, just getting started. And Mr. All. Crane, I accept your offer. <laughs> Thank you, Mrs. Hawks. Oh, not at all. So glad to have you back. My trunks will be up later. I wasn't sure that we still lived here. Oh, yes. Mrs. Spencer just was here and paid the rent again yesterday. Well, if you need anything, let me know. Thank you. We can't compete with this thing, Hendricks. It's manufactured about half the cost of ours. How long has it been on the market? Oh, I should say about six months, Mr. Kenner. Oh. I think it was late last fall that I brought their introductory offer to your attention. It's out selling us two to one all over the territory now. Well, licked, Hendrick. The only thing left for me to do is to buy out this fellow Crane. Or we might just as well throw the cannon mappers right through the window. Well, now, I've discovered another interesting angle to that matter, Mr. Kenner. What's that? Mr. Crane's manager is your granddaughter's husband. No. Well, what do you know about that? <laughs> Why, the low double crossing. I'll show them they can't get away with this. 25 years of integrity, reputation, and service counts for something. You know that, Hendricks. Oh, yes, yes, of course, Mr. Cannon, but. But what? Well, sir, progress and. All progress, that. my foot. I'll show you progress. I'm going to Chicago and straighten this matter out right away. You look after things. Yes, sir. It's all right for Bob to have turned down my offer and gone off on his own. But it's a bit thick, after all, for him to have done it at my expense. Well, don't shout at me, Graham. Take it up with Bob. I've been to the office and I couldn't see him. He was tied up with a spring sales meeting or something. I waited an hour, mind you. An hour! What do you think of that? Well, as you said yourself, I married a real man, and you might as well face that fact. What on earth is that? What do you want, Mrs. Spencer? Same place? Yes, please. Isn't Bob sweet, Grant? The boy's all right. I always said so, didn't I? Oh, no, you don't, Grant. Not this time. Here you are, boys. Why, thanks. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Mrs. Spencer. Glad to see you, Grant. How are you? Bob, I'm so happy about the piano. Ah, uh, don't mention it, sweet. Oh, here. Here's a flock of extra chops for dinner. Sorry I couldn't see you at the office, Grant. Why didn't you wait? I did wait. An hour. Well, that's too bad. But business is business, you know. Exactly. So I'll come right to the point. I'm here to buy out your business. So you and this fellow Crane better get together on a figure. Well, I'm afraid that's out of the question. What do you mean, out of the question? Crane wouldn't sell. And if you were tempted to, I'd talk him out of it. We, uh, we might, however, uh, consider a partnership. I don't want a partnership. I want to buy you out, and I'm in no mood to fool. Now listen to me. I've got a good thing, and I know it. And so do you. And if you think... Now wait a minute, young fella. You listen to me. When I start... Partners? <laughs> 